Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We are here today to condone the big inside in Egypt, what happened in Egypt, executing about 27 innocent people because they are against this military regime in Egypt, which they came after the military coup started in the 3rd of July 2013. They issued a politicized judiciary, belonged to the military foundation. They politicized everything. They turned Egypt to be a military state, not a democracy state, as they <coughs> tried to say to the international community. Now, we have civil judiciary, we have the military judiciary, <coughs> we have a fiscal trials, we have more than 54,000 people in front of the military court with the fiscal trials. It's not a real trial. They executed already 27 people. Some of them, these executions, their sentences being issued by the military court and the other issued by the civilian court. And now we have in the panel to talk, in my right, Dr. Mahazam, is the president of the Egyptian Revolutionary Council. And also in the right side is Mr. Toby Kedman. He's an international lawyer. Uh, at the Geneva International Justice Chambers. And in my left side is Mr. Nassim Ahmed. He's a political analyst at the Middle East uh, Monitor. And we will start with uh, Dr. Ma Azam to comment about what's going on of this kind of a legal massacre in Egypt. Please. Thank you very much, Mr. Sudan, and uh, uh, this is a um, really a, a very sad day for us to be holding a press conference because we have held many press conferences before from London in which we have warned of the danger of the military regime in Egypt. But today we're gathered following uh, an unprecedented number of executions. Between the 26th of December and the 2nd of January, uh, 20 executions have taken place uh, under circumstances which international organizations and the United Nations High Commissioner have all described as lacking in due process or free trial. These are not our words. They are not the words of the Egyptian opposition, but they are the words of international organizations and the High Commissioner uh, of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights in Geneva. Lack of due process, lack of respect uh, for the, uh, conv the covenant of civil and political rights to which Egypt is a signatory. Egypt uh, has uh, the regime of uh, General Sisi has flagrantly uh, broken uh, the basic tenets of all international co uh, conventions, has broken the tenets of Egypt's own penal code, has broken uh, the principles of his own constitution and of previous Egyptian constitutions. Young men. Uh, who were forcibly disappeared, tortured, uh, and uh, were not given a fair trial, uh, were executed, and their families asked to come and collect their bodies. Uh, there was evidence that was put forward that could have been used, which clearly uh, clarified that they were not the culprits, and that evidence was not accepted, and the executions went forward. 
what we have before us, and I'd like to put some context into, uh, as to what ha has happened in terms of the executions and the danger we face in terms of further executions in Egypt. The context is that of a military regime a police state whose security services and which uh, and whose judiciary is uh, now be has now become the arm of the military have taken uh, uh, um, arbitrary decisions to ensure that these executions take place in order to instill fear in the opposition in general and to ensure that there is no recourse to any kind of political opposition peaceful political opposition in the country. Egypt's prisons, as many of you know, are full of political dissidents and others who have committed no crime at all except to voice their opinion at one point or another. We have over 60,000 political prisoners in Egypt's prisons. Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International have clearly documented the cases of torture and slow death that is happening in Egypt's prisons. Uh, what we see today is an escalation of the number of those executed, an unprecedented number, reprieve, the organization Reprieve, which is based here in the UK, has put out also a very strong statement by its director, in which also Reprieve says that the number of executions that have happened in one day, the 15 executed uh, in the, at the end of 2017, was one of the highest, if not the highest, number of executions in one day since 1952. Egypt is in a state of crisis in terms of its human rights violations, but also in terms of the danger it, that it faces in terms of security in Sinai and the security threat that its citizens face from the military regime and the ongoing uh, danger from violent extremism. The world needs to stand up. The international community needs to speak out. We welcome the statements made by the High Commissioner, of the United Nations High Commissioner. We welcome the statements that have come from international human rights bodies, but that is not enough. We want to ensure that this regime, this military regime, one of the worst in terms of human rights violations in the modern history of Egypt is censored. It needs to be censored diplomatically and politically. We therefore call on the European Union member states, on the UK government from whose soil we speak, and on the Secretary General of the United Nations to ensure that all necessary steps, political and diplomatic, are taken in all international organizations to ensure that no further executions take place in Egypt until there is an independent judicial system, that there should be a moratorium on the executions. We also call on the boycott of Egypt in terms of arms sales that are used by this military regime in order to ensure that the citizens of Sinai are dispersed and made homeless. Uh, and this in itself adds to the danger of radicalization and insecurity and instability. Aid going to Egypt must be conditional. Aid, whether from the United States or any of the European member states, must be made conditional in terms of Egypt uh, standing by its uh, obligations internationally to the respect of human rights and to the end of any executions that are happening at this stage where, as I've said before, there is a lack of due process where the judiciary has become an arm of the military. These calls are ones that are necessary in order to maintain security and stability in Egypt, but also in the region. We also note that unless the governments of the democratic world, and the United Kingdom in particular, which is one of the largest investors in Egypt, take note of what is happening, we know full well that the people of Egypt will remember who stood with them and who stood against them. A final word which is related not just to the executions but all international bodies and governments ought to be aware 
that there is a systematic uh, process by which people in uh, w uh, by which prisoners are allowed to die slowly in Egypt's prisons because of a lack of medical care. And foremost in this case is the case of President Mohamed Morsi, the first elected president of Egypt and the legitimate president of Egypt. His health is in danger. The military regime of Egypt has withheld medical care for the president as it has for many others, MPs and others in Egypt's jails who have died. We call out to the international community and to governments to stand by the international obligations to ensure that the adequate medical care and treatment of President Morsi takes place urgently and that of other prisoners. The international bodies uh, have voiced their, uh, their concern, but that is not enough. Serious steps need to be taken for an independent medical team to visit the president and to ensure that adequate medical care is given to him and an inspection of all the, uh, the prisoners and the prisons in Egypt. Um, I urge the High Commissioner, the United Nations High Commissioner in Geneva, to take this forward. We welcome the statement, but we need uh, serious steps to be taken to ensure that the Egyptian regime does not continue to execute the innocent or to allow the slow death, the systematic slow death of innocent people in prison. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Maha, for all this explanation by what's going on in Egypt and turning Egypt to state to punish anyone or both this kind of military regime, which turned Egypt to be a military state and a fear state. And now we're going to listen to the comments of Mr. Toby Kernan, please. Uh, thank you very much. Um, We've heard from Dr. Maha uh, Azam where she has said that the, the statements of concern, uh, whilst recognised and applauded, um, as do I, are, are not enough. Um, what, we've, what we want to see is action being taken, um, positive action being taken, that will restore Egypt to a system of democracy and a system where the rule of law prevails. Um, what we have seen over the last few years is a systematic destruction of the rule of law and a dismantling of judicial institutions, independent judicial institutions. Uh, we are seeing a system far worse than what was experienced before uh, President Morsi uh, came into power. Uh, we are seeing a system far more brutal than that which was under uh, Mubarak in the past. Uh, we see a military regime that has taken complete control over the judiciary and is using the judiciary as a way to, uh, to dispose of political opponents. Uh, the executions that we have seen are highly troubling. We have seen and we have heard of statements from the UN High Commissioner. Um, but again, what we need is action being taken to ensure that no further executions are carried out. And we have to say this very clearly, that any execution which is carried out following a trial which constitutes a flagrant denial of justice, as is the case in all of these cases, that constitutes summary execution. It constitutes state-sanctioned murder. And we should not be afraid to use such language because that's precisely what we are seeing. Um, all of these matters have been brought to the attention of the UN Special Rapporteur on Summary Execution as well as the UN High Commissioner and the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention that has jurisdiction over these matters. What is regrettable is when an institution which Egypt has, has agreed to be bound by, which is the African Commission on Human and People's Rights, when that body has requested that no further executions are carried out pending their inquiry into whether these executions should legally be carried out, 
the authorities have completely disregarded them and carried out the executions um, regardless. And that is deeply troubling. We've heard many statements from Sisi and his regime as to their commitment to democracy and their commitment to the rule of law. Um, it is unfortunately just talk. It is utter nonsense. And the international community has to recognize that that is utter nonsense and that continuing to support what can only be described as a dictatorial regime is dangerous not just for the people of Egypt, but for all of us. When we continue to sign trade agreements, when we continue to provide them with arms, we are giving them the resources and the justification for carrying out such acts which go against international law. And that needs to be addressed, and it needs to be urgently addressed and executed. The cases of journalists, Shokan, who I represent, Mahmoud Nabi, who continue to be detained for being journalists, and the tens of thousands of other individuals who remain detained in the regime's prisons without any access to proper legal representation, without access to proper medical care, as is the case with President Mohamed Morsi, whose life, as uh, Dr. Azam has said, is in danger as a result of withholding medical care. And let me make this final point. Not only are we seeing a systematic practice of torture within the prisons, the withholding of medical care, when it puts an individual's life at risk, also constitutes torture. And this is being sanctioned by the authorities in Egypt, and this is a matter that needs to be brought to an immediate end. We can no longer look at this as business as usual. Action needs to be taken. It needs to be put on the agenda of the United Nations Security Council, failing which the United Nations General Assembly to recognize the, the troubling situation that is emerging in Egypt. It is not getting better. It is getting worse. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kedman. Actually, we're still in a very, very sad time to hear what's going on in Egypt and to hear this kind of words and to hear this kind of silence from the international community about these crimes every day in Egypt, killing innocent people, and also this crime coming from the military courts and from the civilian courts to execute innocence for nothing. And now we're going to listen to the segment of uh, Mr. Uh, Nassim Ahmed from uh, Middle East. Uh, thank you very much. I'll speak more to the um, wider implications of the crimes of the military junta of the Egyptian regime. Uh, 2017, as we know, has been a very, very dark year for the Egyptian people and for human rights in Egypt. Um, the crimes from the counter revolution has not gone down. If anything, it has increased over the last year. Um, uh, political accountability, political transparency, transparency, human rights, these are all in crisis within the Egyptian regime, as Dr. Maha has pointed out. Uh, many now wish to return to the authoritarianism of Mubarak instead of facing the arbitrary exercise of power and tyranny and despotic rule of the CC regime. Um, prior to the, uh, the uh, counter-revolution funded by a number of Gulf states, um, execution within Egypt was more or less minimal. Between 2011 and 2013, there were probably one or two executions. But following the ousting of the democratically elected Mursi government, uh, this figure has uh, gone up dramatically. Between 2013 and 2016, there were 81 executions carried out by the CC uh, regime. And 2017, we saw an even alarming rise in this figure. Um, a total of 112 executions took place last year. So uh, we have seen a consistent um, dis descending, consistent uh, downhill spiral of the human rights violations uh, within the Egyptian regime, uh, and 
none of the countries in the EU, uh, the American government or the United Nations have actually uh, done anything to undermine or prevent the downhill spiral of the human rights abuse that's taking place. For the vast majority, the path to the ex execution would have been marked by a series of uh, grave human rights abuse. Uh, it would have begun with uh, uh, enforced disappearance, as was the case with the uh, first 19 that were executed uh, during Christmas. Um, to, over 2017, there were 254 cases of enforced disappearance. Uh, many uh, cases, entire families were uh, disappeared, and children as young as 14 um, had been subjected to enforced disappearance uh, by the growing shadowy government uh, uh, security forces of the Egyptian regime. And while held in captive, they would have been uh, subjected to torture and a series of violations. They would have been denied uh, uh, lawyers, and also um, they would have uh, been forced to give confessions. So these are some of the uh, uh, these are a series of crimes which uh, the 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 the, the uh, abducted and the uh, political activists would have faced before they were um, uh, subjected to an execution. In the case of the Kafar al Sheikh case, uh, m it is a clearly a willful miscarriage of justice um, that has been highlighted by a number of human rights groups from Amnesty, Human Rights Watch, and of course, uh, Reprieve. Um, um, as we know, they were all civilians, and yet they were sentenced by the Egyptian military courts, and the confessions were obtained through torture. So the, the, the unprecedented rise in execution uh, is most likely, as Toby has pointed out, is going to continue and rise in the coming years. Uh, because it's really about political um, uh, settling political scores with uh, um, opponents. And uh, um, we will see an unprecedented um, level of injustice in the next, uh, next year or so until the EU and Western governments take a stand and reward Sisi for the crimes he's committing. Um, Sisi um, is, um, is reducing the space for political dissent for all his oppositions and uh, any kind of any kind of uh, dissent against the regime has been criminalized, totally criminalized. Um, political oppositions face uh, either prison or, as we saw, uh, execution. Uh, the state of human rights in Egypt, of course, speaks to a much greater issue, a much broader issue, which is the reversal of some of the great principles of the 20th century. Uh, we are seeing, um, we saw that the 20th century was an era of stability, cementing of human rights, but Egypt under Sisi uh, seems to be at the forefront of undermining, the, undermining many of the uh, challenges that had been won by um, uh, society uh, against the arbitrary use of power. And the beginning of the 20th century, sadly, uh, seems to be reversing those gains. And Sisi and many of his um, supporters in the region seems to be at the forefront of undermining those successes. Uh, now we are seeing a new coalition of despots that are, you know, with Sisi and the Egyptian regime at the forefront, um, trying to wipe out the progressive voices calling for human rights, dignity, and political accountability uh, in the region. Uh, we are returning to a world of arbitrary power, uh, despotism, and, and uh, the abuse of human rights within the region um, uh, fronted by Sisi um, is spreading like a virus. So um, I think we need to call on the EU, of course, but also there needs to be a clarification by the United Nations because countries like Egypt uh, regimes like that of, this, of Sisi are using a number of, uh, a number of um, UN resolutions to, um, to prop up their security forces. Uh, for example, UN Resolution uh, 2178, uh, which uh, calls on states to counter violent extremism and stem the tide of terrorism. Uh, Sisi has used uh, UN resolutions which are ambiguous, which are vague, to um, go after his political opponents. So we need the United Nations to clarify some of its own resolutions, what it means by countering violent extremism, and the UN Rapporteur on Terrorism needs to explain what violent extremism really means within their countries and not allow, um, uh, and not allow um, regimes to get away with uh, going after 
uh, their political opponents on the basis they are actually fighting terrorism. Uh, that's something, that's a clarification which the United Nations needs to make um, uh, and prevent further abuse and violation of human rights uh, within Egypt and, of course, uh, in the region as a whole. Uh, so um, I, I thank the Arab um, Egyptian uh, Egyptians for democracy in the UK for holding this press conference, and we hope something will come out uh, from this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Nassim, for coming and to uh, speak up with this uh, statement, very important. And now I just want to shed light about this recent case, which is called Kafr Sheikh. Kafr Sheikh, this case, with it, the, the incident was to kill three students for a military academy in Egypt. They are waiting to ride a bus in a little city in a delta called Kafr Sheikh, and something happened and exploded this bus, and three of these students uh, passed away. Uh, and they accused 63 people for this incident in Egypt. But the military prosecution released in the first 23 people and then released another 24 people. And finally, they accused 16 people for this kind of incident. Seven of them got the death sentences and the other life sentences or 15 year sentences. Those seven people, three of them are absent and four they were uh, in hand of the, um, uh, of the military. What happened that that all those people, the seven people, which they get the uh, uh, the sentences, they were disappearance. They were uh, enforced disappearance by the authority, by the military authority or by the security forces in Egypt before this uh, incident happened in Kafr Sheikh. Then, for sure, they are not who did this kind of crime. They did not do this exclusion. Also, the lawyers present a lot of evidence, show that they were arrested before this evidence, but the court no, never listened. They tried to ask for the CCTV, which shows who was the, who were doing this crime, but the court never listened for this, never listened from, for the lawyers, for any kind of evidence, show that all of these people are innocent and somebody else did this kind of crime. And uh, uh, if you let me please write in a quick the, um, uh, our statement, our press release um, about these executions happening in Egypt. Uh, actually, we have more than 11,500 people killed by the Egyptian authority after the military coup took place in the 3rd of July 2013. But we have a lot of people uh, being killed inside the prison or inside the uh, detention centers by the authority, either for torturing, from torturing, or from uh, the um, Rabaa massacre or Nahda massacre or many, many other massacres in Egypt. And also we have more than 500 people being killed inside the prisons and detention center because a lack of medical service. And they still, they still doing this crime. Even most of the uh, human rights organizations, they speak out to stop this kind of lack of uh, medical service, torturing, but they keep going and unfortunately the international community keep silent about this. And now I'm going to read the, uh, the press release uh, about the execution in Egypt. After the recent chain of execution of seven and 19 innocent people opposed to the military coup by the Egyptian military authority, we call on, number one, the African Union to refreeze the membership of Egypt again, as they did it after the military coup right away. Because the Egyptian military authority have entirely ignored the commission's uh, moratorium on the death penalty by failing to observe the defendant's right to a fair trial as uh, bear the guarantee included uh, in the African Charter and the other international uh, treaties. The African Union has called on the Egyptian government to reappeal the death sentences in 20 new cases 
the African Commission on Human and People Rights, a body within the African Union, has urged, uh, had urged the Egyptian government to immediately suspend it, the death sentences. This measure came after the Egyptian Freedom and Justice Party, the uh, political arm for the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, sent a complaint to the Commission on behalf of the prisoners who were about to be executed. Number two, we urge all democratic countries to suspend the relationship with the Egyptian authority till they stop executing innocents at the decision of leader of the coup, Abdel Fattah Sisi, and should release more than 80,000 political prisoners, prisoners opposed to the military coup because of Abu Tahsisi, when he get out of the town, when he get out of the country, when he meet the international media, he always said this uh, verdict, this sentences, is just for absence people. And we will never do, we never execute anyone. But he is a liar. He is lying to the Western media. And they should do this. And they should speak out about this kind of lies. Number three, we urge democratic governments in the world to stop providing Egypt with the weapons of killing protesters. We urge, number four, the European Union to suspend its relation with Egypt until Italy knows who killed Giulio Regini, our pro to justice. Regini, the 28-year-old Cambridge PhD student from Italy, his badly tortured body was found dumped by the side of a main road outside Cairo amid suspicions that he had been kidnapped, tortured, and killed by the Egyptian security forces. Number five, we urge all Western media to expose that Egypt is not a safe country. Egypt is not a safe country for tourists, or students as long as the country is ruled by the military authority that threaten the security and the safety of its own citizens. Number six, we urge all human rights organizations to focus on Egypt and the huge catastrophe after the military coup took place there on the 3rd of July 2013. Number seven, we urge the IMF to stop supporting the Egyptian authority because there is an absence of social justice in Egypt and the military authority agendas corruption. Number eight, we urge that consulate of Western countries do not issue visas to civilian and the military judges who keep issuing random death sentences against the political uh, dissenters, or two V presenters who keep inciting police who torture and kill prisoners and protesters. Number nine, we urge the Western media to expose the fact that the Egyptian authority has issued more than 2,000 death sentences since January 2014 till now, and the claimed the evidence was gained via confessions through torture and denial of the right of access to lawyers. And the prisoners have all had their death sentences confirmed and are without further right of appeal. And that 26 innocents have been executed so far. Number 10, we call on the United Nations and other international organizations to ensure that there is a proper medical treatment of President Morsi and all other prisoners. Number 11, we call on human rights organization to ensure that Egyptian authority stops the forced displacement of residents in Sinai, which is considered a crime against the humanity. Furthermore, the displacement, deportation, and forcible transfer of Population is also a crime against humanity, according to the Rome Statute 
of International Criminal Court, in particular Article 2, Band D. Number 12, we remind all democratic people in the world that the international silence regarding the current collective punishment underway in Sinai with the forced eviction of residents, leaving them homeless and destitute is a crime against humanity and the threat to Egypt and the region's security and stability. Number 13, we urge the Muslim world and democratic countries not to permit the Grand Mufti, Sheikh Shaw'i Alam, to enter the countries as he is a partner to the judicial system as he is responsible for ratifying the final decision to carry out the executions. Finally, all Egyptian citizens need to know why European governments support and receive Abdel Fattah Sisi despite the fact that is recognized by the leading Western human rights organization that he is regime is responsible for some of the most wide spirit and systematic human rights abuses and the killing of political opponents in Egypt modern history. I want to thank you very much all who are coming to this uh, press conference and also I thank very much Dr. Maha, the speakers which is Dr. Maha and Mr. Toby Kedman and Mr. Nassim Ahmed for coming and deliver their speech and we wish to regain the freedom and dignity back to Egyptians, which they lose it after the 3rd of July 2013. And I want to send the uh, sincere, uh, uh, sincere uh, condolences. Uh, condolences. condolences. I want to send sincere condolences for all the family of the murdered, uh, which had been killed by the Egyptian authority since the 3rd of July till uh, now. And we hope that no more souls lost by this kind of military authority in Egypt anymore. And uh, again, thank you very much for all coming uh, to sh uh, show solidarity for the, uh, what's going on in Egypt. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.